Alright guys, we are talking now about quadratic uh quadratic uh graphs or sometimes you call them parabolas. Okay? And here we'll talk about how to sketch a quadratic graph or a parabola. And the first thing that we need to know is what is the standard form? And uh here uh in grade 10, we would normally give you y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. When you pass, we'll also expose you to the formula y is equals to ax minus p all, uh, minus p all squared plus q. In order for us to move from here to here, we understand that we have to complete the square. But that is a that is a discussion for another day. All right. So let us look at sketching. When we sketch, we want to look at two scenarios here. Now look at two scenarios. We're going to look at y equals to um, ax squared plus bx plus c. And on the other side, I will look at y equals to ax minus p squared plus q. Okay. So the first thing with all the cases, we want to find out what is the shape. And we will find out that the shape is actually influenced by two things. It is influenced by whether a is positive. That is positive or a is negative so if a is positive we expect a smiling face if a is negative we expect a frowning face the same would apply here we also want to look at the shape and here again if uh, our a is uh, positive we expect a smiling face and if a is negative we expect a frowning face. So that is very much important for you to remember. The second thing that we want to determine, we want to find out what is the axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry? And there are two ways that we can do it. We can do it using the grade 10 and 11 method where you have x equals to minus b all over 2a or we can also use grade 12 calculus where you can just simply say that set dy over dx to be equals to zero then solve for x the x that you get would be your axis of symmetry uh, but when you look at this one here the axis of symmetry you just draw it from the equation axis of symmetry and we'll look at this much in, in much detail. You will just draw it from the equation. It will just be uh, x is equals to p. Okay. So I think we are going well. Number three, we want to look at the y turning point. And uh, in the first scenario, the y turning point, it is found by substituting the axis of symmetry into the original equation okay and then this one here you don't have to labor that much when you find the y turning point when you find the y turning point you are just going to look at the value of q you are going to say y is equals to q and then number four, we want to look at the x-intercept. The x-intercept. Again, here we are going to let x, we are, we are going to let y be zero, then solve for x. Here we are going to let, uh, again, the same story here. We are going to let y be zero, then solve for x. And lastly, we want to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept, we are going to let, we are going to let um, x be 0, then solve for y. And in this case here, the same thing we are going to do. We are going to let x 
b0 then solve for y in the next part of the video i will then be looking at some examples of putting these two things into practice